noches y bienvenidos. Estamos muy agradecidos que ustedes están sincronizándose esta noche para escuchar más de Dios, aprender más de Él. Y hoy estamos con los jóvenes de New Hope y va a ser, vamos a hablar un poco de Spanglish, más inglés que los servicios normales, porque nosotros somos gente que habla más inglés. So we're here to welcome everyone and thank you guys for, you know, seeing us tonight for learning more of Christ. And I'm here with a couple of the youth from the church, and we're talking about a topic that's very relatable. You know, throughout this year, even though it just started, we're talking about the battle of our soul. We're talking about, you know, conquering our soul and being led by the Spirit to do everything that Christ has in store for us. And this is an everyday battle. You know, it doesn't just end the minute we accept Christ and, you know, that's it. My life is perfect forever. You know, it's an ongoing battle that every day we have to choose to say yes to Christ. Every day we have to choose to be led by the Spirit and not be succumbed to our souls, where our minds, our emotions, and our will, you know, run wild. And I'm here with a few of the youth today. You know, we're here to just talk about this, this topic, and we're here to elaborate a little bit and give, your, and give our perspectives on what we've learned, you know, what we think about this, and share our life experiences with you. So we want to start, you know, but I want to start by just like opening up the table. You know, this is a very wide topic. There's so much you can talk about this tonight. But one of the first things that, you know, I want to get on the table is this battle of our soul. You know, we're fighting between our soul and the spirit, you know, our will, what we want to do and what God wants us to do. So I want to ask you guys, you know, in this topic, what has been, you know, the hardest thing that you that you think about this? So let's start with Miriam. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Miriam Ordonez, and uh, I'm part of the youth group, the youth leadership, and uh, the ministry of Alabanza here in New Hope. And I would just like to start off by saying in this topic that um, what I find the most difficult about the battle of our soul and our spirit is that it's a constant battle. It's not like there's, um, um, it's every day. Even though Jesus went to the, cry, to the cross and died for us, we still have to um, overcome sin every day because it's still very part of our natural life. Uh, even though we're part of this world, we're not from it, we're God's children. And, but we still have the same challenges and have the same troubles as everyone else in the world. But the good thing about us, especially um, people, the believers, is that we have something called our spirit. And with our spirit, we're able to succumb over sin and we're able to actually um, achieve the new life that God has promised us here on earth before even going to heaven. So just I'd like to like give hope to those people who are struggling to overcome their, their soul, the sin of the soul, that even though it's hard and even though we have the same challenges, every single one of us face challenges in our life. It's not just one person facing a challenge and like, that's it. It's only for um, people that aren't believers. Every believer also faces challenges. And sometimes it's even harder, uh, the challenges they face, because they think, why if I'm part of like God's, God's children, if I'm part of the church, why do these bad things keep happening to me? But really, it's so God could um, use that to teach us, to discipline us, and to show us more, and to reveal more His love to us, so we could um, seek Him, and so we could find new ways to find a relationship with him, a connection to him, and um, overcome that sin. Definitely. You know, we're in this talk of the soul, and we do have our daily battles. So I want to, like, open it up as well. Like, what are your daily battles with your soul? Um, well, to add to, to Miriam, I feel like we, um, we, as people, we take it as, like, oh, why is this happening to us? Like, why is everything happening wrong in my life? And we also shouldn't see it that way. We shouldn't see it as, like, this is bad. We should see it as, like, from a different perspective because God is love and he is grace. So we should see it as, like, okay, we should reflect on what's happening. If something bad is happening, we should be like, okay, no. Like, we're not going to take it the wrong way. We're going to be like, okay, what would God, like, what would God do at this moment? Like, we take it for the better because that's what he would want to do. Definitely, that's a great way to see it because sometimes, you know, and that's the thing about us believers is that we have, like Miriam was saying, this hope. 
well, well, sorry, right where, where other people would be like, oh my gosh, my life sucks and all that stuff. We're like, no, we know God has a purpose in our life. We know God is doing this, you know, because he allowed it because we know God is in control of our lives, right? And we're like, okay, God is doing this because there's a purpose behind it. So let me reflect on the positive instead of, you know, staying on the negative, instead of, you know, saying, you know, why is this happening to me? We go to that perspective where we're like, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me? So I want to ask you guys, you know, I'm pretty sure we've all gone through a situation, be either good or bad, where we learn something because, you know, we, we saw God working behind it. So I wanted to ask you guys, you know, what has been your experience, either hardships or, you know, good times where you've seen God's hand in your life? Well, I feel like going back to, I think it was like a week or two weeks ago, um, there is this moment where I was just feeling like very anxious. It was weird because like I'm pretty introverted, so I don't mind being alone, like having my alone time. But um, there is like the situation where I had to go out somewhere like by myself. And for some reason, I just felt like so anxious and I kept having like this fear that like something bad was going to happen while I was like out in public by myself. So I was just like in my head, in my thoughts, telling myself like, oh, something's going to go wrong or like, I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was kind of like fighting with myself. And then I like had to take myself out of that situation and out of that mindset and kind of realize that like, okay, this is happening for a reason, like, God is, you know, here with me right now, and I understand that he's already given me everything, and I understand that I have that peace already in me, but I just have to, like, actually believe it and apply it in that moment, and so once I was able to do that, I saw his goodness, and, you know, I was fine, I'm here today, nothing happened, so um, I was able to step back from those thoughts of having, like, fear and doubt, and move forward and be like, I have peace already inside me, I have confidence that nothing is going to happen, and, you know, that God is protecting me, and then, you know, that was, like, just an example where I saw his goodness in that moment. Um, definitely. Uh, I relate to your example a lot, too, like in situations where like there's a lot to stress about. There's a lot to be anxious about. There's a lot of fear, like especially for me is uh, school. Like I I prioritize like testing and like doing homework essays and stuff like that. And a lot of times in those moments when I'm like, oh, um, when other, because I have friends in the school that they're like, oh my goodness, I'm so scared, I'm so anxious in the test, and even sometimes me too, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm scared too, but then I remembered, like, you know, it's God that has my back, and it's not through me that I do this stuff, but it's God helping me, and I like to, like, reassure them, like, no, you're gonna do fine, like, we're gonna do good, like, even today, like, I had a little test, uh, well, it was a pretty big test, actually, and, um, I was with this one friend, and before the actual test, we were like, why don't we do a little prayer? <laughs> so we could, like, know, like, go good. And we both aced the test, and it's in biology. Oh, and congratulations. Like, <laughs> yeah, so, but it's, like, little things like that, like, just putting little influences there, like, being hopeful, and um, that's little ways you could show the life of Christ in you, and you overcome that, like, soul, the, 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 sim yeah, the emotions of the soul that they say, no, you have to be scared because everyone else is scared, no, you have to uh, have fear because everyone else has fear, but you think, like, wait, if God is um, reigning over me, and he's the Prince of Peace, Jesus, then why do I have to fear if he's with me? Yeah, and to jump off what Kaylee and Miriam said, that it's very important, um, you know, to be governed by the Spirit. And I think it's very important for us also, since we all have the Spirit here, to share the Spirit, you know, with people that do not know God. Because it's very important God calls us, you know, to evangelize. And since we're learning about the Spirit, like, what better way to follow Jesus' steps than to impart that Spirit in other people, you know, to, because we know that with the Spirit, like, we, in difficult situations, like, we know that we have, like, a solution, which is God right? So it's great for us to share the faith, you know, to people, because we know right now, maybe people are going through anxiety, or they're going through trouble, or they lost someone through, um, through you know, what's happening right now, and it's very um, important for us to show them that there is, like, a light in the end of the tunnel, so it's good to talk about our faith, you know, because 
um, all the blessings that we have, like how great, like that we could share with another person that could also, like it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be a neighbor. So it's very important for us to share our faith because, you know, um, we want to be imparting all of us, like what we have to new people. Definitely. And, you know, talking about new people, um, you three, well, actually, Jessica, too, are in college. But I know you three recently started college. And, you know, it's a whole new level of, like, education and environment, too, after being in high school, because we're in high school, like, four years with the same people. But then you go into this different environment. And, you know, I graduated uh, college three, eight, eight, nineteen. 19. Yeah, like, three years ago, three to four years ago. So it's been a while. And especially, you know, being, you guys are college freshmen or sophomore? Freshmen. Freshmen. Fresh meat. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but I wanted to ask you, like, how has this changed between, like, going from high school, seeing, like, people on the daily to, like, college, having a, you know, it times 10, you know, because it's a completely different environment. Classes are bigger, you know. High school, you have, like, maybe 300 to, like, 500 people in your class, where in college, you have, like, 200 people in a classroom, you know, in an auditorium. So I wanted to ask you ladies, like, how have you transitioned from this small kind of school to a big college community and still preserve, you know, preserve that life of Christ in you, seeing how people, I'm pretty sure in college, really, if you were to say whether they're either spirit inclined or soul inclined, they're like all the way down to like the soul, the depths of their soul, you know. So I wanted to ask you ladies, you know, your experience and then how you preserve that life and not be influenced by the people around you. Well, <laughs> no, I was gonna say, yeah. um, well, it wasn't really like uh, from high school to college. I felt like it was more the quarantine that got me into a real encounter with God. Because honestly, my high school days were like, yeah, we'll go to church and we're like, yeah, yeah, God. And then when, oh, yeah, is it? You just Hello? look cool. Okay. Um, when it was during quarantine, I feel like everyone like hit like, a spot that they were, like, oh, my God, like, I feel so alone, like, I need something. Like, we all just had voids to be filled, and we didn't really find it anywhere, and then that's where I really had a true encounter with God, and I was, like, wow, like, he really is something great, and then I feel like if I had this encounter in high school, I felt like I would have been more, like, better with my situations. I would have handled them way better than I would have back then. So it's just, I feel like college is now, like, it's good. It's good, you know. It's college. Um, what I would like to say, like, what I would like to add on from that is that many times we see, like, oh, yeah, quarantine has really showed me the problem I have. But really, that problem was always there. Like, that void has always been there. But maybe before quarantine, we had other stuff to, like, mask it. Yes, we had friends. We had people to hang out with, like, school and a whole bunch of stuff to mask it. But when we're really alone at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, you're alone. Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're married, if you're not married. Uh, you're by yourself, like, you have your own person in you. When you go to sleep at night, in your mind, who do you talk to? You don't talk to your spouse or your friend or anything. They're like, let me sleep. <laughs> you talk to yourself, like, at night. I talk to myself at night. So, um, <laughs> but it really, what quarantine did is it's magnified that issue we had. And it really, I think, maybe this is another way God turns things that are bad, like quarantine, going to coronavirus to good because a lot of people had encounters with God in quarantine and they were able to see God in ways they, in ways they never could because um, their issues, their void was magnified because of the loneliness or because of, um, you know, not interacting. The solitude, with yeah. yeah. And on the college aspect, uh, I went from online high school to online college. So <laughs> it wasn't really... <laughs> A big difference for me, I was like, I was kind of sad, but it wasn't like a huge difference. But definitely with like the people I've met, I feel like if you're like, if you're true to yourself and like, if you're like being your real self and you're not like faking it or trying to do stuff, I feel like um, God sends people to your life and like you attract people that are like you. Because mm -hmm. like for me, like I've met people that are like good people, that they're like um, hard workers, that they're like good people, they're not like bad, that they don't curse, or they don't do anything like that. And I think it's because uh, 
one, because of the grace of God that God has given us. And because, you know, spirit attracts, like, other people that are like that, like, that are prone to um, the spirit. And it's, God puts those people in your life so you could talk to them and so you could, like, um, show them the life of Christ in you. That's what I want to say. Yeah, going back to what you were saying about, like, how quarantine has allowed us to, like, just be alone and magnify, you know, that issue that was always there but was, like, being masked by, like, you know, everything that went on in high school. It's, like... Like, even though it was something that, you know, us as humans, we see as bad because it's like, oh, I can't be with my friends anymore. And, like, I was so excited to start college, but now, like, I'm online and no one really shows their face. So it's like, I don't know who I'm talking to. Sure. But um, I feel like all those steps that we've been taking, all those weeks of, like, quarantine and, like, having that time of being online, it's, like, you, like, really see who who is there like you see God even in like the littlest things because like for example my teacher um I have like a music class it's not easy teaching music through a computer oh like my goodness yeah I, can imagine. I felt so bad for him but yet like every single zoom he is so passionate and he's so like willing to teach us and the students are like actually interacting and like asking questions and it just goes to show like how even though it's not the best or like most convenient situation of like, you know, learning how to play music through a screen, um, it still like goes to show how people are still like growing and learning and like coping with it. And, um, you know, hopefully because we had that time alone, we had like time to reflect. And when we do go back in person to college, like it'll be it'll be like we're stronger in our faith and not really allow like the bad influences come but rather us be like a good influence to others and just like treat one another with respect and kindness because we've all had like a hard time throughout this pandemic so oh yeah definitely and I really like what you guys were saying how in the pandemic you know it highlighted issues that were always there but because we had access to so many things, we just kind of like hit it, but until it came to the point where it was unavoidable and we just had to face our issue. And uh, you know, f for the good of God, for most people, it brought them closer to Christ or closer to their community because that's something, you know, we've been learning about you know, conquering our souls, about being led by the spirit. And one of those aspects is being in a, com in a community where it's spirit led, you know, the importance of congregating, of having like minded friends, people who are in that same vision, who are in, you know, that same um, faith as you, so they can also guide you because no one ever has to go through their troubles alone. That's, a, that's why we have each other. That's why we have, you know, either youth groups or, you know, church services, prayers for people to go to find people to help them grow. And we're all like in this process of being perfected, of growing in Christ. And as the, the amazing thing is that as we grow, the people closest to us also grow with us. And I want to like kind of point it back to you because ever since, you know, you know, Ashley started coming to youth group like this year, like almost every single service, service. And like she was saying, she had this like true encounter with Christ. And because of that, one of the things that was very, very prominent is that she began to influence the people around her. And she brought her friends, you know, also to youth group. And they're actually, you know, congregating too. So I want to like ask you, how did you do it? For all the people who have friends, because I'm pretty sure there's people who have friends who don't know Christ, who are like, you know, trying and trying like how can I get them to know Christ without seeing that Christ is boring or that or without like oh church like no I don't want to go to church so I wanted to ask you like how did you do it how did you impart to them you know and how did that you know process go well <laughs> um Wait, just put your mic a bit closer yeah um well for some of my friends like, I don't know, I, I'm just a very easygoing gal, all right? So it's just, they're already, like, super close to me. So uh, one day, Melo just was in her room and, well, in my room, and we were just talking about things, and obviously we, as teenagers, we go through a lot. So she just expressed herself, and then literally she was the one that came up to me, so God works, you know, in ways, and she was just like, like, I need a guidance. And I was like, hold up, girl, my mama. <laughs> and then... She was like, yeah, like, I want her to pray for me. And, like, ever since that day, she just felt the love of God over her. Like, she 
like was crying so much like we were like there for her and she was like oh I want to go like all the people that came to me were like like you go to church right like they all just wanted God so it wasn't me like go to church uh, uh, let's go to church like it was more like them like they wanted to be in this congregation so it was just you know God works in mysterious ways so and it's so it's very interesting because maybe we're in this time now where, like we were mentioned, our voids, issues, problems, whatever you want to call them, have been highlighted, and people are realizing the only way is Christ. So maybe that's kind of like a little heads up for like all of us to begin to manifest Christ even more, and pray to God to lead us to those people that wants him so that way we can show them like oh you're looking for the, the the truth let me show you who the truth is and you want to say something yeah something that i feel it's like um uh in jesus's time um well and in like the apostles time the disciples time even early church like not everyone knew about jesus right you had to go and tell them like do you know about jesus do you know who jesus is They're like no i don't know but in today's world, a lot of people know who Jesus is. They know him, maybe not truly, but they've heard of him. Um, and God is like doing a switch, I think. That it's like instead of us going to them, our like spirit, our, the way we are, um, brings them to us. And it brings them closer to Jesus. The only thing we have to do is say that we're um, uh, like they can depend, God can depend on us. To use as a as a so that God can use us as a vessel. Yes, as a vessel to others. Because um, if you go up to everyone, do you know Jesus? Do you want to go to church? Do you know this? Um, instead of like pulling people, you might pull them away. But um, the real connection is when God brings you those people and they ask you like, oh, do you um, do you go to church? Can you tell me God? But imagine if they did that to you, but Ashley was like, oh no, I, I don't know anything about God, or like, yeah. no, I don't. <laughs> if you're if, if God knows he can depend on you, then he's going to send those type of people into your life because he knows this is my daughter and she's going to lead them to where they have to go. So, yeah, I guess that's up to us. And, and it's funny because everything ties in together. God works in mysterious ways and he always makes everything line up. So maybe that's why he brought this series, you know, that we've been learning about ba the battle between us, in us, between the soul and the spirit because we need to be dependable perfected so that way when god brings us the people we can actually lead them towards christ and not away from him and it's you know a lot to think about and it's ultimately just being there you know saying telling god lord here i am use me and being willing willing to go beyond you know once again the battle beyond our thoughts our doubts our fears our insecurities because you know that's also a battle of, of our soul it's not just oh am i gonna sin today am i not i think like us christians we're gonna pass that point you know we don't really commit like sin anymore it's not like we go out and like fornicate or we you know go out and get drunk or all that stuff or commit murder you know that's not us we don't steal or stuff like that but <laughs> that's not us believers but i think our like battle is more in our emotions in our will you know fighting against the doubt against the fear and insecurity of you know either being called out or being you know um singled out or shamed because i was listening to like a podcast a christian podcast and it was saying how the devil now he instead of trying to you know um tempt you to like sin he tries to shame you out of this you know community you know that's the devil's plan to get you it's, even though you're like christian converted and all that stuff you know he tries to isolate you so that you don't manifest everything that god has for you so that when god tries to use you to bring someone towards christ you know it's not as effective because you may try to like you may doubt yourself and you're like no god not me please no not me anyone else but not me and it's kind of like that fight within us that we have to say yes to God, not just to him, because it's easy to say yes to God and like worship him and come to church and read our Bible. But it's also, OK, so now we need to go out. So now you need to manifest it to other people who are not Christians, because like the Bible says, it's easy to love those who love you. But it's but that doesn't really the Bible says, but that doesn't count, you know. What God looks at is if you love those who don't love you. And that's, you know, the hard part. That's the fight between, you know, one of the fights between our soul and our spirit. 
you know, being compassionate towards others, you know, going up to like maybe that person who's alone and we're like, oh, you know, I kind of want to hang with my friends. But no, like going up to them and talking to them and even without saying, you know, Jesus out loud, we're showing who he is so that way they, he can be known. Um, and about that verse that says, like, if you only love people who love you, then like you're no different than anyone else. Like exactly. yeah. you have to love those who uh, uh, not only you don't like, but nobody, nobody likes. likes. Mm -hmm. And it really reminded me of this book that I once read. And it wasn't a Christian book. It kind of, like it was a book I had to read for school, uh, and it was called Re Rising Out of Hatred. And I'd like to share a little bit about it because it relates to that. So um, it's about this this uh, man, this boy that goes to college, and he's a white supremacist. So his father is from, like, the um, KKK. Like, he's a white supremacist. He has, like, um, ideas that white people are superior and stuff like that. And when he goes to school, he tries to hide that about him. But when someone discovers him, everyone isolates him. Everyone like unfriends him, everyone hates him. Um, but there's one person, uh, a Latino person, that says, instead of hating this person, I'm, a, I'm gonna be his friend. And maybe like with me being his friend, I could change the way he thinks. And I could like, using that, being friends, maybe I could um, like show him that not all Latin people, not all black people are bad. So, um, and, the, and to make the story really short, he does like change the mentality of being a white supremacist and his friends is like a black person, a Jewish person, and a, a Latin person. Um, but it wasn't through hatred that they were able to change his mind, but it was through loving that person, even though everyone hates them. Because if you were to say, oh, would you be friends with this uh, white supremacist? You know, like, that's not for me. No, the, God, the love of God doesn't reach that far, right? <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of people think like that. But no, God's love reaches everywhere, even where no one wants to go. If you love those type of people, I'm not saying love also white supremacists, but I'm saying, like, if you see that everyone hates them, why do you think they feel like that? Because they get the hatred from everybody and say, like, with that hatred, they fuel up what they think. Mm -hmm. But if someone shows them the love, and especially if it's the love of God, which is more powerful than all human love, that's how you change the way they think. And that's how you change them towards Christ and towards the Spirit. And that's what I wanted to share. No, definitely. Like, I said this before. There's a Bible verse that says it's the kindness, it's God's kindness that leads people to change. And it's amazing because, you know, it's just, it's like a little scratch at his love. Because his love, if you continue to like meditate on the verse, it's super, super deep. Because it says it's his kindness, not his, it's not his righteousness, not his mercy, not even, you know, all the goodness. But it's his kindness, you know, his love for us, you know, who he is that causes us to change, causes us to think like, how can I not love him? How can I not change? And it's not a radical like, now I have a yes list of things I can do and a no list of things that I cannot do. No, it's things that I do out of love. I do these things out of love and I don't do these things out of love. And we need to, you know, it's easy to do that with Christ, but we need to do that with each other as well. You know, we need to love each other just like that. And that's also, you know, talking about like our soul and our spirit, going back to like that little topic, we need to choose to do them because sometimes we're not going to want to. Sometimes we get up and, it's, you know, I think with the whole quarantine, it started with our families. You know, we were stuck with them. And then being there, being with them the whole time, we're like, we kind of get used to them and we either stop being kind. You know, we kind of like lash out at them and we're like, they can take in us. But no, we need to like go back to that kindness that God shows us and show that same kindness, respect and love towards people around us. Because I feel like God was kind of like giving us um, like a prep. Of, okay, let's start with our family so then I can take you out to the world so you can be ready to manifest that love. Because, you know, loving our family is easy, but, you know, it can also be, like, very hard. Because we love them, but sometimes we're like, oh, I just can't stand with you. I can't stand <laughs> it with you and stuff like that. So if we learn to, like, let our spirit take over and whenever, you know, one of the things, for example, that I deal with is sometimes when I get, like, upset or some, or, like, mad, I tend, instead of, you know, instead of, you know, speaking calmly and thinking of, like, a rational way to respond, I tend to just react. And sometimes I either react very harshly or, you know, choose, you know, poor words to speak and I get into a bigger, like, 
Leo and I'm like, great. So now things gotten from bad to worse. And it's kind of like learning to like, okay, even though this upset me, even though my soul wants to like, like bite back, I need to like pull it down, realize just how um, you guys were saying how everything is already within us. Like Kaylee, you were saying with your anxiousness, you knew God's peace was already in you. We know that God's peace, God's love, you know, his joy is already inside of us. And we just need to kind of like tap into it to let it out. And it's funny because, you know, as soon as we let it out, it kind of like falls over us too. You know, we spread it, but we also gain it. That's why the Bible says, you know, it's better to give than to receive. Because when we give, we're all, in a way, we're also receiving, you know. And it's that kind of like battle that we need to fight on a daily. We need to remember that love and, you know, choose to love even the most unlovable people. Because Jesus did that. You know, when Jesus came here to earth, who did he have lunch and, you know, dinner with? With tax collectors, which were like super, like the worst people on earth. With prostitutes, you know, with sinners. And the Pharisees, aka, you know, the Christians of that time would judge Jesus and be like, if, only, if you only knew who you're hanging out with. But no, Jesus did that intentionally because he was there for those people. He loved those who no one loved. And just how, you know, you guys were saying that's our job, too. And out of this, everything that we've been learning, it's kind of our time to rise, you know, rise and shine. <laughs> Not to quote any Kardashian and stuff like that. But it's, it's our time to just, you know, spread that love of Christ and tap into our spirits and be conscious of it. Because I think one of the biggest things is that most of us, we're not conscious of what we do on a daily basis. Like, we go on with our life and we forget to either, like, pray or we forget to, like, even thank God for our food and stuff like that. And then the end of the day comes and you're like, oh, my gosh, I never prayed. Like, oh, my gosh, my devotional for today. And it's, you know, being more aware of that. So I kind of, like, wanted to ask you guys, like, what do you think can help us be more aware of, you know, the Christ that lives inside of us, you know, the spirit that lives inside of us? I think what can help us be more aware is um, of the Christ inside of us is like just like how you said that each and every single day, like it's us having to make a choice to say yes to Jesus and no to everything else. And once we realize that our yes means no to everything else, I feel like we can continue with that process and understand that like, okay, I'm saying yes to Jesus, That's, that means I'm saying yes to following him, to being devoted to him, to praying, setting aside time. And once we kind of get into that habit and like exercise it more and more each day, it is a hard process, but even like the baby steps, they still make progress. And once we like continue with that each and every day, it'll be come hopefully second nature to us. And we'll be, like, more conscious of, like, because I want to be like Jesus, because I'm following Jesus, I have to, you know, actually put my words into actions. And I have to go out and show kindness like Jesus, show kindness, show love, and show grace, even when it's hard for me to do it. Because that's, like, the whole point of the battle between the spirit and the soul is to let your spirit overcome those thoughts and those um, uh, doubts and stuff like like the burdens uh. of the soul and kind of be like okay it's the spirit's time to shine soul please quiet down <laughs> and um, yeah so pretty much like just saying yes each and every day and trying to be more like him I think will make us more aware I also think that um, reading the bible also helps a lot because some people, like, they don't know how to start. Like, oh, like, I don't have, like, the willpower to look for God. And it's like reading a book. Like, sometimes, like, you, like, you start it off, and it might not be that interesting. But as you keep on reading it, like, you get really hooked in the story. And God, obviously, will give you revelation. So I think um, even someone that's just starting off, like, you know, learning about God, and he, they want to know more, I think reading the Bible is, you know, a key part of that. And even if you don't a big reader, like you can listen to, to preachings and they quote the Bible there. So I think that helps you, you know, grow in your spiritual life because sometimes you don't know what decision to take and you don't want to tell, maybe you're 
like to not vulnerable enough to tell people like what you're going through. But you know, you could always ask God and God could lead you through the word. And a lot of examples are there, like a lot of disciples or even people that weren't disciples, they have an encounter of God and God showed them ways out of their situations. Like a lot of situations that happened that we can relate to, you know, in present day. So I think reading the Bible is also a pretty great way to help, you know, the internal bad one to help the spirit grow. Because even if you're discouraged, like there's verses that will lift you up. Like, you know, like if someone gives you like a, like a, like a, um, like a compliment, right? Or something that gets your spirits up and the word of God is full of encouraging words that will help you like in your battles that you're going through and also just praying, you know, to Jesus because Jesus, he went through everything. Like they said that he was tempted in every single thing. So there's not one thing that he hasn't been tempted in. So whatever we go through, Jesus overcame it. So I think it's very important to have that connection with Jesus knowing that, oh, like um, you can't think you're not good enough because God, maybe he was tempted there too, but he, there is a way to overcome it and there's a way to go past it. So I think those are good like tools to use. They help me. Yeah. Very nice. Um, to speak about what Kaylee was speaking, um, we have to do our actions as well as with like with love because sometimes I forget as well. Sometimes I'm like in a fight and I'm like, okay, let me just not even speak. Let me just calm myself. Let me just go to my room, breathe. Okay, mom, yes. And then, but then like you think about it, like sometimes I, I do it and I'm like, like, why? Like, I'm being the bigger person always. Like, this is frustrating. But we have to think of it, like, from a different perspective as well. Like, we should see it, like, okay, you know what? I'm actually doing better. She'll soon realize as well. Like, everything has its time. So we can't rush things. We can't be like, mom, but listen to me. Like, sometimes we just got to take it. We got to be like, okay, you know what? Maybe she's right, you know? And everything just has to be out of love, like how we have to pour Christ in us because God is love. So. And I think something that's really important is knowing that um, we can't just wake up every day and be like, oh, I, I'm, today I'm going to read the Bible, or today I'm going to uh, like pray, or today I'm going to, you know, if we try to do anything like with by ourselves every day we're gonna end up in the same in scenario. our own strength yeah in our same scenario at night be like oh man i didn't do any of the things i said i was gonna do because it's happened to me before like you say like today i'm not no fight no angry nothing but that's when you are trying to do things on your own account like you're trying to with your own will uh-huh. trying to make those things happen but really the only thing that can make that happen is a uh, like intimacy with god is a relationship with god He's the only one that could help you by strengthening your spirit to actually um, take those steps. Because us alone, we can't do anything. But God, through us, the spirit through us, he's the one that can make us, um, like, give our bodies as a sacrifice. Yeah, that's why I think it's important to understand, like, why we do things. Because, you know, a lot of the times with religion versus, like, a relationship with God, we see religion as, like, a set of rules that we have to follow, and that's it. But we don't always understand why. But when we have that intimacy, like how you were talking about, it kind of um, puts us in a perspective of, like, understanding why I'm doing this, why I'm choosing each and every day to say yes. And it's through that love because without that love, like, we we can't do it without love. We're going to get tired. We're going to get burdened. We're going to be worn down. So it's just like being conscious and understanding why I'm doing this. And it's at the end of the day, it's for God. Definitely. Intimacy is, you know, going on what Mary was saying, it's very important. Having that relationship with Christ. It's not a religion that we have, but a relationship with Christ. And, some, you know, another point I wanted to, like, bring up to the table is the, the point of community, you know. I think, um, you know, 2020, we had the whole pandemic and all that stuff. And now we're learning to, like, really reconnect with people, you know. We're trusting on each other more because we realize the importance of community because, you know, um, I don't remember who said it, but um, it, it's a, n- a known fact, like a science, you know, sciencey fact, that human humans are wired for connection. You know, we crave interaction with each other. We crave to be known or to be wanted, you know. That's something in our nature that we need. There was a study from babies, you know, that um, it was a study of, you know, newborn babies 
and the study was there was a sample studies of babies who you know they were they were like cuddled and like cradled when they were born and babies who were just left you know in their little like either incubator or the little like crib or stuff like that and the babies who were cuddled survived more than the babies that were just left you know alone with very little human interaction and just kind of it's very interesting sad you know babies but like those babies who weren't really loved kind of like didn't make didn't make it but those who were there were the ones that pulled through stronger than ever and it's just you kind of like ties into like that need and that importance of community and how to find it in the right place because we've all been there we've all maybe had a friend who they were like a great person but they weren't a great example they weren't a great influence or you know we wanted to get to know someone and we realized oh you know from our own account that maybe this isn't the best person for me maybe you know their ways and what i believe you know their beliefs and my beliefs are a bit different and you know we're not going to you know, we're not going to like uh, match up correctly and it's learning to realize where we fit in learning to realize this community of believers that we have why it's so important to like come to church to congregate to find this you know these people who are like-minded same you know faith as us that can help us with any issues any problems because we never have to go through anything alone you know we have each other and we help each other you know where for example where I falter, you guys are there to tell me like, hey, you know, let me help you in this area. Like, oh, I've been noticing this. Because a true friend is one that will tell you, you know, where you're messing up and tell you like, hey, but I'm not just a single y'all be like, ha, you know, you messed up, fix yourself. But a true friend, you know, is one that's like, let me help you. You know, you're messing up here. I see that, you know, you're doing X, Y, Z. So let me help you, you know, get back on the right track. And that's why we need like-minded people to help us get on the right track, you know, the track facing Christ. And, you know, I wanted your opinions on the on what you guys think of community, you know, as a believer. We were just talking about, like, uh, um, relationships, but in God. Like, the other day, me, Kaylee, and Ashley, do you remember in the restaurant? We were saying how, like, um, it is important, like, when you're looking for a new relationship, to look at someone who also has, like, Christ in them, someone that is also has the same, like, faith as you. Um, because many times people settle for, like, oh, you know, he doesn't know Christ, or, you know, like, he doesn't go to church, he actually doesn't believe in religion or God, but, like, he's a good person and this. But that actually puts us, like, in more of an issue than we started with. We were looking for a connection, but now we have, like, full of troubles and stuff like that. So I think like uh, like a wise like um, tip? Tip, tip yeah <laughs> for like all the young people out there like well um, wait for someone that's like has the same faith as you or the same like is Christian that actually has like embodies Christ or the Spirit because it's gonna save you a lot of headache and a lot of problems for the future. That's what I would like to say. And I think also like when you have that community of people that you know, believe in the same thing that you believe in and have that same faith, it, like, motivates you to keep going because, you know, this walk of faith is not easy. This battle between the soul saying no to what we want is hard. But when we have other people that are doing it too, it, like, it really helps you and encourages you to keep going because in the parts that we may be lacking in is maybe a strength in that other person and that we can help each other out like my strengths could be someone else's weaknesses or my or the other way around vice versa so it just really helps to have that community of people that believe in the same thing so that together we can you know essentially do God's will because we can't do it alone it's a body it's a function that works together and I like that um we like obviously, you know, we all have, like, uh, people in our church that we can come to and talk to, and I think that's very, actually, very important because we can't really, like, just close ourselves and be like, oh, I'm not going to talk about this. I can handle this on my own. Like, no, it's actually great to actually talk about it, like, uh, with friends and family. Like, I feel like I could really speak about all the things that I'm going through with my mom, and she's a very wise person, and I know that God speaks through her. God speaks through anybody, but it's just like hearing that from a wise person, it's, it's very motivating as well, like to keep going, to keep going through this trial as well. And with friends, I've literally spoken to her the other day, and I was like, yes. <laughs> and it just, like, Danima, like, you need that in your life as well with her. We all have had conversations. 
like, and it's just a great feeling because it's family. Yeah. Definitely, and the thing about having like a community based in faith, especially here, you know, here in New Hope, is that we're like a judgment-free zone. You know, you can be your true self without that fear of being shamed, without the fear of being, you know, casted out or being neglected because we, like, you know, we were talking about love so much. And it's true because this is where we kind of, like, test it out with each other because we're, you know, obviously none of us are perfect. We all have our things we need to work on, but we love each other in spite of that. We see each other through the eyes of God, seeing each other the way God sees us so that we can help each other achieve you know, what God wants us to achieve, and that comes together. You know, we're one body, like um, you guys were saying, composed of just many different parts. And we all work together, you know, to make Christ known, to spread the news of Christ to everyone, and to just grow together. And as we grow, you know, other people grow along with us. And, you know, to kind of begin to end, um, you know, this talk, um, is there anything, you know, maybe to like a new believer or someone who really wants to learn how to walk in the spirit or any kind of advice or last things you guys want to say to those who may be watching. I think it's very important um, for new believers to speak what they are feeling because a lot of people um, bottle things a lot inside. And, you know, we also had, I think one of the first preachings that we had this year in youth group that you and Gianni gave was about the power of our words that we um, like, they have power. Like, if we talk to someone about how we feel, we'll feel, like, kind of liberated after. Because if we keep everything inside, then that um, creates more chaos than good. So I think if you're a new believer, talk to someone that is of higher faith. Like, if you come to church and you're new and you feel all these emotions, you could just find one person to speak about it. And then as you speak about it, then you'll see how liberating you'll feel. Um, because like when we, let's say when we receive Christ, like they call us up in the front, not to like embarrass us or like for us to feel like, oh, like no one wants to go up. That sometimes when people do it like in their seat, but just the act of you physically like saying the words, like I accept you, God, like that has power more Definitely. than in your thoughts. So I think that's a good advice um, to speak about how you feel. Speak even if it's nothing too deep, just maybe you have like anxiety or you have something that's bugging you or you have a person that's bothering you. If you talk about it, then you will feel more liberated. And that's like the first step. Talking about it is the first step, you know, to get your the solution that God, you know, has for you. That's it. Uh, an advice I would give to a new believer would be, to come to church, like, don't be afraid to come to church, um, you know, we talk to you, we, like, make you feel welcome, a lot of people think that, like, they could get the same, like, experience watching it through Facebook or watching it through, like, Instagram Live or something, especially youth group, it's not the same watching it through Instagram Live than coming to church and actually, like, experiencing it, so I would just say, come to church, don't be afraid, and wear your mask when you come to church. <laughs> Um, I think another piece of advice would be to not be so hard on yourself in this walk because um, like how we were talking about, I think I mentioned it earlier, but this is a process. It's a never ending process. It's something that, you know, it continues each and every single day. And so if you're really hard on yourself, you know, like maybe one day you mess up or like one day you feel bad because, oh, I didn't pray. I didn't do my devotional. Like, it's okay because, you know, at the end of the day, God is not going to be like, oh, my God, really? You didn't do the devotional today? You didn't pray? Like, huh. no. <laughs> he's forgiving, and he still loves and cares for you. So, like, just don't be discouraged and keep going. Know that the little things matter, too. The little steps that you take, it's all, you know, worthwhile. Uh, just advice to everyone, like, not just to newcomers, because I know that um, people with me, uh, that have been here for many years also struggle with this. It's like uh, things are always going to be hard. And sometimes that hard later on just becomes easy. Like because we've done it so much, we're like, oh, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. But then that also, that's a practice. And then after a long practice, it just becomes easier. And then another thing becomes the hard part again. So it's just like a cycle, a cycle. And we can't limit ourselves as well. We can't be like, oh, I can't do it because it's hard. Because honestly, we, everything is possible through Christ. Everything. So we just have to believe in him as well. We have to um, grow in our faith, grow in our maturity, grow 
um, as a person, we have to just hang on to Christ as long as we can because he's standing firm for us. So Definitely. And, you know, what I would like to add to, like, close, like Josh, as she was saying, to, like, everyone, something, an advice I would give is never give up. Our battle between the soul and the spirit is never ending. It's there till the day we see Christ face to face. So never give up. You know, think we're going to have good days, we're going to have bad days. But the good thing is that we don't give up. We don't let those bad days overcome us and make us throw the towel or make us say, you know what, this isn't for me anymore. But the Bible says that if we continue running the good race, you know, that's what matters. You know, the Bible says, don't tire of doing good because in due time you will reap your harvest. Meaning, you know, don't get tired of doing good because eventually you will see it, you will see the blessing. You will see the good things come out of everything you've done, everything, you know, you've tried to do all the good things that you're doing. You will see how that benefits your life. You will see the effect it has not just in you, but in everyone around you. Because when God gives us something, it's not just for us, but it's to bless those around us. So I want to, you know, thank you ladies for joining me tonight. And I want to close in a prayer so that we can seal this word, so that we can Put these words to practice and continue being led by the Spirit and conquering our soul. So you can just close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for all these wonderful young ladies who came up here and spread your word. We pray, Lord, that we can seal this word. Let us always be led by the Spirit. Let us fight that never-ending battle of the of the soul and the spirit and let the spirit dominate we pray that your mind is our mind that we are like-minded abba let your will be ours let your thoughts be ours let your will be done in our lives and in this session we thank you lord for everything that you've done we thank you for everything that you're going to do and we declare that this word will reach many people will reach those who need to hear it and will cause a true change in our hearts we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor because it all belongs to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll be here once again next Thursday at 8 p.m. Have a great evening. <laughs>